Good morning. This is Pastor Joe Williams once again with the encouraging word for this week. You know, this week in my quiet time, I read through Genesis, I'm into Exodus, and I was going through all the plagues and everything, and, uh, and, and I was fascinated by that. In fact, I joked that when I was a boy, one of the plagues, the frogs, I couldn't relate to that because I love to catch frogs and I love to catch tadpoles and I thought that'd be kind of cool. And I, I realized when I got older that no, it, it wasn't cool that millions and millions of frogs covering everything was indeed a, a plague and then the diseases that they brought. But as I read through it, every time, and I've read through it I don't know how many times and I read about the Ten Commandments, when I get to the last plague where the firstborn of Egypt is killed by the angel of death, it, it, it is sobering. In a, in a way, it's a little bit frightening. And then as a Christian, I began to think right now about Jesus Christ, that he is the Lamb of God and, and what he's done for me. And the reason that I wanted to talk to you today about this is in my quiet time, the Lord convicted me of some things in my life that are not holy, that are sins, things that uh, uh, the Lord, I believe, wants me to change or repent of, things I need to ask forgiveness about. Because even though he's a loving God, his love is not cheap. And the grace that we received was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me read to you just a little excerpt of what I read in the book of Exodus. And I'm hoping this will inspire you to live a more holy life and to think about the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. This is in uh, Exodus chapter 12 is where I'll start. And I'm not going to read all of it so the message won't be too long. It says, Now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, quote, On the tenth of this month they are each one to take a lamb for themselves, according to their father's households, a lamb for each household. Now if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his neighbor nearest to his house are to take one according to the number of purses in them. According to what each man should eat, you are to divide the lamb. Now, a lot of these are details, but I want you to understand how important they are because the Passover hadn't even taken place yet. God was instructing Moses and Aaron to tell the people what they were needing to do because of the angel of death that was just about to come. Verse 5, Your lamb shall be an unblemished male, a year old, and you may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to kill it at twilight. It's a little chilling, isn't it? Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. And they shall eat the flesh the same night, roasted with fire. They shall eat it with unleavened bread. And remember, leaven always represents sin. And so that's why we eat unleavened bread. And bitter herbs. And do not eat any of it raw or boiled at all with water, but rather roasted with fire, both its head and its legs, along with its entrails. And you shall not leave any of it over until morning. But whatever is left of it until morning, you shall burn with fire. Now you shall eat it in this manner, with your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now, what I want to emphasize is not all the details here about the staff in your hand and the bitter herbs, and we know that each of those are very significant, that you're about to go on a 40-year journey that you don't know about, and you have to have the staff in your hand, and the bitter herbs is the slavery in Egypt. We're going to get to me by far the most important part, and we're going to look again at the blood on the lintel and what it represents when it says Passover. The blood shall be a sign for you and on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now this day will be a memorial to you and you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You are to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance. 
They were never to forget the Passover, that the firstborn were spared, but only because of the blood of the sacrifice. Now, let me skip forward a little bit. Verse 21. Then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and take for yourselves lambs according to your families and slay the Passover lamb. And you shall take a, a bunch of hyssop, which is a plant, okay, and dip it in blood, which is in the basin, and apply some of the blood that is in the basin to the lintel and to the two doorposts, and none of you shall go out the door of his house until morning. You know, I wouldn't. I mean, I, I can't imagine what it was like, but when the angel of death came and the firstborn of even the livestock uh, of what was left over for the Egyptians, then the Israelis, uh, they were spared. But you see, they would not even have been spared if they had not have applied the blood. So let me read just a little bit further here. I'm gonna skip over to verse 29. Now it came about at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne, no one's too powerful for the Lord, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn in the cow. No one is too obscure. Don't think, I, ah, you know, no one's gonna notice the sin in my life. No, God notices everything. He is a holy God. He is a just God. He's merciful, but he's holy and he's just and he cannot overlook sin. And Pharaoh rose in the night, and he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, and there was no home where there was not someone dead. Then he called for Moses and Aaron at night and said, Rise up, get out from among my people, both you and the sons of Israel. Go and worship the Lord as you have said. Take your flocks and your herds as you have said, and go and bless me also. The mighty Pharaoh, after all the different plagues, was humbled. You and I might not be as hardened as Pharaoh. I, I don't know, but I don't want to get that way. Even myself as the pastor, and I'm supposed to be a leader, I have sins in my heart that many times I let them stay there. Uh, I, I've uh, fostered habits that I'm not proud of. And when the Holy Spirit convicts you of something, you better understand that the blood that Jesus shed for you is not just a gift, it was bought dearly. And if you need to confess sin right now and you need to ask for forgiveness, there's things in your life you need to repent of, then this is the opportunity to do it. And it just, this made me think about how precious the blood is from Exodus all the way through Jesus and his sacrifice. And even at this very moment, the blood of Jesus is powerful. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. We can never thank you and praise you enough for the sacrifice of Jesus, the blood that he shed on the cross, the precious blood that redeems us, buys us back, erases our sins. That's why you could say, it is finished. You finished it on the cross. Father, we, we humbly, gratefully accept your sacrifice. Father, if there are sins in our life we want to do like it says in James, confess them and accept your forgiveness and not live in our sins, God. Father, we want to do like you told us in Hebrews and not to take your blood sacrifice lightly and not to just live any way we want, but to live in obedience to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Amen.